Hello and a very warm welcome. I thought I would reach out and say hello and give a little introduction as to my journey into poetry. Um, as many of you know, I've been a celebrant for 28 years and uh, so I've been writing a long time. But the forms of poetry intrigued me. I signed up for a poetry masterclass with Australian poet Mark Tredinick. Uh, it was called What the Light Tells. And it was just an extraordinary class both in terms of content, but also in terms of timing. I'd signed up the year before, and in December of that year, I was diagnosed with a malignant cancer, ovarian cancer. And so I had little idea of what the next year would hold, but I became definitely more alive in that time. And so having the opportunity, uh, the class started a week after my surgery. And having that time in recovery was precious time where I got to write and learn and be supported by a lovely community of writers. So I followed through with the six weeks and uh, my cancer is I'm fully recovered. And I then studied some more with New South Wales writing. Uh, some beautiful poets there, Emily Bitto, Fiona Wright, um, Pip Smith. So it was an ongoing journey of learning and more recently, just finishing up doing a mentorship with Mark Tredenick, which has been very inspiring and very nourishing for the writing. Naturally, the content I used was a lot around my work and also my journey uh, in recovery. And more recently, just some more personal poems about my family. I'm caring for my 87 year old father at the moment. So there's a, a lovely collection coming together that he's really enjoyed um, listening to as I've read them to him. So it's quite a, a, a natural sort of very organic process that finds me here after all this time. For the conference, I was invited to come down to Melbourne to the conference in July and I've put together a suite of celebrant uh, poetry about our work, about our role in the community, but also about some of the ceremonies that I have um, been, been a witness to and conducted. So I'd like to share with you one of those poems now, just so you can get a, a sort of flavour of some of the work. This is called The Fisherwoman's Net, and I wrote this after I'd conducted a morning and celebration circle, which I'm starting to do a lot more of prior to the main funeral, where we gather the family, the intimate family, or maybe the intimate group of friends, and we sit together and each person gets to speak. And I hold the space in a way that uh, um, I set it up so that people don't cross talk or engage in conversation. This is an opportunity for each person to voice their grief or maybe a story, a celebration or a, a, a wish that they want to put forward. And this family gathered, there was about 25 of us and they'd never heard of a morning and celebration circle as many people haven't. But they were very deeply open and interested in it. And she said, well, why not? And so we met at their property where uh, the father of the two boys had died unexpectedly in an accident. And we gathered and sat in the late afternoon and shared stories. So I'd like to read this poem, The Fisherwoman's Net. Inside a glass room in the forest or by the Never Never River, peace has a rhythm, crickets, frogs and geckos. The moon's halo lights the high cirrus. A storm is coming. Late this afternoon, I stood on the small jetty and could see through the water, sand and stones. A gold perch disappeared into the shadows. I think it was a perch, but I am not a fisherwoman of the river. I've cast my net wide these last few days to hold a family's love, their angst and mourning, as they gave voice to their grief for a son, a father, a brother, an uncle, a friend. A supple net made of rope and knots and old funeral rites has held them as the waves of grief 
tossed them. And the tide shifted and the weather changed. The squalls hit hard. Where they sank, stories rose and fell. The waters listen, the storm passed. Everyone was seen, no one was stranded. And I sat with them on the deck for tea and a kookaburra came and the orange sun sank behind the mountain. You know, the importance of coming together and sharing stories and mourning and celebrating. There was lots of laughter as well. Uh, so you'll find many of my poems weave this thread of my work, but also my personal celebration of what we get to do as celebrants. So when we meet at the conference, I've got a nice, lovely suite of poems that cover um, weddings and also cover some funny stories. There's a great one around uh, the unmarried celebrant. There's ones about you know how much we get paid for being a celebrant. Um, this, how I became a celebrant is a, a lovely story that I relate uh, the experience of that. So I hope you'll join us. Thank you.